Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. And uh, thanks for tuning in. Much appreciated. Um, alongside Jan, Jan from New York City. Says, hey, Steve, with me? everybody. Uh, <laughs> she has a video that she just recently did that yeah. she would like to elaborate on. So um, we'll Thank you. Thank you so much for having me, Steve. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, everybody, for being here. I appreciate everybody's time. You know, you watch the news, okay, and you hear mainly bad news. <laughs> and it's kind of like not funny, especially in the inflation, high gas prices, people struggling to make ends meet. And some people viewing this video or other similar videos right now, are trying to figure out how to make ends meet. So, cause we're approaching that time of the month of which we're sitting down to get our bills out for the next month, many of us, okay? So I do have my concerns for anyone that's going through a bit of a struggle. And you know what, Steve? Uh, just recently, yesterday I put out a very powerful upload. In my opinion, one of the, to me, very powerful upload in reference to what to do whenever you try to make an extremely tough decision, it's sort of kind of like robbing Pete to pay Paul type mm -hmm. of thing, but I'm getting item specific about rent. Steve, having a roof doesn't have to be a fancy roof. Having a roof is a good thing. And of course the bird clock is going off. Just saying, just saying. All right. Having a roof is not only a good thing, it really is a necessary thing. It doesn't have to be a fancy roof. It could be in a studio apartment. It could be a rented room. It could be somewhere decent and clean. Some people uh, have learned to accustom themselves to living in maybe their van or, you know, tiny houses. People are scaling down. So you probably say, well, what's all of this have to do with what you're talking about, John? Actually, a lot. Number one, I do believe, Steve, that there are times we have to forego the usual thing that we might normally do. And the usual thing that we might normally do, for example, is when we get all of our bills, you know, pay off our credit cards. But I'm going to tell you something. Go back to that video and you'll be shocked and amazed as to the answer to the question. And here I'm going to pose the question here. If you have to pay your rent and to make sure you don't default on your rent, are you going to pay your rent first or are you going to pay down your debt first, your credit card first? This actually, this kind of an answer is kind of a little complicated because it depends. If you're, let's say, renting an apartment, the rules and regulations are very strict. You cannot be late on your rent. You don't want it to default. You don't want to have to go through all the trouble of moving unless you desire to move. That's, that's a different issue, but you don't want to be in a situation where you might heaven forbid become evicted. All right. So an ounce of prevention is worth the pound of cure. Steve, this is why I strongly suggest a thing that I call a bare bones emergency fund. Not your typical fully funded emergency fund, but at the very least to have the amount of money that you normally would pay for either rent or mortgage one month. And in addition to that, whatever the amount of your average utility bills are, have that amount first and foremost. But Jan, what about food? I'm not saying eventually don't add the food, just these two things. Have roof money, utility money. Roof, electric. It gets cold, it gets rainy. We're moving into a cooler season very soon, many of us. The weather starts turning very unpredictable. So if you have to make a decision, I'm going to ask this again, between paying your rent or paying down your credit card, wouldn't it stand to reason to pay your credit card at a minimum because you could, you pay your rent first, rent first. This is what I would do. I'm not giving advice. I don't give advice, but if it, if it were me and I had to, you know, push comes to shove, rent comes first. 
as far as the credit card, you could always call the credit tour and perhaps make out a deal. Maybe who knows? You may qualify for some sort of, um, you know, deferment or some sort of other payment arrangement or, oh, Steve, why am I blanking out on that terminology of uh, when you do you know, your credit card and you combine it, you transfer it, a credit card transfer, a balance transfer, okay? Or you could always work it out. You could work it out on the phone with the bank. But when it comes to your rent falling behind, and especially people with kids. So to me, rent first, utilities. There you go. Just like that. You don't want to fall into default and have rent falling behind. Mm -mm, not good. Steve, what do you think about that? Well, first off, let me glance back. There we go. Um, well, first off, you don't want to, you don't want to default on your rent because that can be a hard hit. And I'll tell you how, when you default on your rent, they have all your, your information. So the leasing company, they can report that to your credit report or the bureaus as non-payment. And that could actually hurt you if you get evicted because if you have any evictions, when you go to another place to try to get an, another apartment, that can work against you. So you got to watch. No, no, no. I urge everybody, if you're renting, as soon as the funds comes in, right off the top, make that rent payment. Yes. yes. Because not only that, you're only given like one, maybe, maybe, if you're lucky, two days grace period. That's it to pay it. It's not like a mortgage. Mortgage has got a little bit more of a window, not as bad. But, e but, but even at that, you don't want to miss a mortgage payment either because then your credit score can easily drop a good 100 points. And then if it goes too far, then they can, you know, put in the paperwork to foreclose. So you don't want to. So make sure your, your roof over your head is number one make, before anything. That's right. Um, a lot of the time, your utilities, your your uh, internet, your uh, your electricity, your phone bills. I know I know most people have cell phones. There are a few that still have a landline, but all of that will come further in the month usually. And not only that, Steve. If you keep those major things down, because if you just let it la you know lapse, it's going to double up. But what about food? If a person is in that dire straits already, then that person needs to throw their pride away. Mm -hmm. Okay, sorry about it, pride. Pride does not fill up children's hungry stomachs. No, you have to go and get the help. That is what it is there for. Have to go uh, sign up with uh, perhaps the SNAP. Have to go to the food bank. Have to call up friends and relatives to help you get through that tough time. Food is obtainable. But utility companies, uh, rent, no, has to be paid. Now, here's the beauty part, Steve. There is a light at the end of the rainbow. I mean, at the end of the tunnel. Mm -hmm. When you pay your rent and when you pay your utilities, guess what? You have an entire month. Month. A month is actually a really long time. Because I get a lot done in a couple of days. And I'm thinking, if I get tons of things done in a couple of days... Just imagine how much more things we could get done in, in a calendar month. That's your time to sell things that you have, look around, uh, you know, maybe do a side hustle, get a quick temporary job, and keep filling up and replenishing that emergency fund. So while things are nice and quiet, and you know what, Steve? This is the chance because the rising gas prices at this recording – Things could change in a few weeks. Mm -hmm. It is my utmost hope and prayer. But at this moment in time, gasoline prices are really, really out of control. And it will inevitably affect other things. Okay? So, therefore, we have to work as best as we possibly can. How much is it approximately in your uh, neck of the woods, Steve? Well, 
on an average, it's about three, uh, right around 360. That's if you get it, or 362. That's if you get it, um, like a Circle K or a or, or a gas station or that's like Shell or BP or something. But I went to Costco this morning. I should have got it yesterday because um, yesterday it was 329. I went this morning. It went up seven cents. Mm-hmm. So wow. I should. I didn't get a lot. You know, just because I'm usually pretty local, I'm not going, you know, long distances. But um, I put some gas in. It was three thirty nine. Um, but I do tell people all the time: if you have a wholesale club membership, Sam's, Costco, BJ's, that's one of the reasons why I have a membership with them is because I can get a reduced cost on fuel. I get le- a lesser amount. That's great. Right. I'd rather pay 339 than to pay 362. So, you know, I'm what am I saving? What 23 cents a gallon, which oh, but that's not all that much. Well, mm, it is if you get 6 or 7 8 10 gallons you're going to see it. But you what you think, oh, one or two gallons, it's not all that. No. But when you put in, you know, Oops, ten times twenty-three cents, two dollars and thirty cents. Right, that's exactly right for on ten gallons. And you know what, Steve? You're breaking, bringing up a good point. Never ever dismiss the small savings. That is a very big mistake that a lot of people make. Oh, oh, it's only ten cents. Oh, it's only twenty-three cents. Whatever. Huge, huge, big, big mistake. Every little bit adds up it does. Whether it at right whether it adds up in your piggy bank and uh you know in the future upload i talk about the association of a piggy bank and a stockpile okay so yeah i have a couple of you know really important things to talk about it is no joke steve i watched from some very reliable sources of you know real media news outlets and i i pay attention to the trends the trends are not great. The trends are not great. I mean, it's, it's got to get better. It's got to get better. But in the meantime, this is the beauty part, Steve. This is why, like, for example, you did wonderful uh, shoppings recently at the Dollar Tree. Those mugs are so beautiful. I mean, they're really, really, I love your mugs. You make great gifts. This is where people yeah. can save, save here, save there. You're still giving a gift and you're still being thoughtful. Yeah, you are. Now, in the in the course of me talking about the different mugs that I bought, I happened to mention about one that had leaves on it. Well, a couple of days ago, I actually went back and got it. So I have that leave mug as I mean, for $6.25, you know, I've got what? 5 mugs. Amazing. Amazing. You would pay well over $25, $27, $30 if you go to an outside department store where you're going to pay a higher amount. And you're probably getting more or less the same quality cup. Can I tell you my experience? A few years ago when we still did have a local dollar store, it wasn't it wasn't quite December, but it was early November. And every time I went to look for mugs, they were gone. Yeah. I'm just saying, right? I'm just saying the wiser person will do their shopping right now before the you know holiday rush for the mugs, because a lot of people like to give them as thoughtful, meaningful gifts. You know, with a little something in it, that type of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because you can take a coffee mug, you can put things in it, candy canes, um, and I like the mug in your picture up in the upper right hand corner. Right. That's that's the everything um everything is better with coffee, the one that I showed in the video. That well that's my morning coffee. Matter of fact, that was nice. from over the weekend. So that was my my Sunday morning coffee. So I decided since the word everything, you know, is a lot like everywhere. Right, similar, yes. I just thought, well, why don't I just go ahead and, you know, use it as a slogan. So It makes me just want to, like, go into the picture and grab it and drink it. 
But you know what? I'm still looking to see if I can locate another yeah. mug like that. What I need to do is I should go and check out a couple of other dollar stores. I've got two, actually, two other. No. One about three up this way in the next little town. And then I've got one back this way. So I could always stop in. And like I said, I should have got two at the time. I didn't think that it was going to be that. That always happens to me. I totally get the it factor in that, Steve. It's always like, oh, why didn't I buy two of that? You know, you think it's always going to be there. Maybe you get lucky. Maybe it is. But starting from this point on, if you really see something and it's in your affordability at that moment, get it. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, I could. Oh, I could have easily have afforded it. In fact, when I went back to get that leaves uh, mug, the one that I showed with the pumpkins on it, there was only four left. Four. What is that telling you? That is telling exactly what what I'm saying. The demand is the demand is out there, and people generally love to. It's just like a rite of passage. Not only not only just for Christmas. If you could, I don't mean you specifically, Steve, anyone viewing, if you, me, whomever, could get a few extra of them. If you could, we could hold it for birthday gifts as well or any other thing as well. It's just a wonderful, you know, wonderful thing to have. These are coping mechanisms. You know, Steve, of course, idealistically, I would rather A, not use a credit card, B, but if I do use a credit card, pay it off right away because it's a mm-hmm. short term loan. But see, if if this is a situation of roof versus credit card, I will make the minimum payment on the credit card, but I will pay the rent. That way you're still keeping it at bay. It's it's like, you know, some people, Steve, they get like a little scratch on them. If they keep scratching and scratching, it's going to get worse. And and you might even be scratching to an infection. This is what happens if you let... Things like the rent lapse. I know no one here viewing wants that to happen. And certainly mm. I do not want that to happen to anyone viewing. So sometimes you just got to throw your pride out the window, go and get the help. Well, actually I've got um, the solution to the rent credit card thing. Good. If you have a major credit card, a major credit card, a lot of the time, <clears throat> You can pick, if you're not happy with your due date, look and see what when the money's due. If you want, oh, it's due on the third of the month. I'm not happy with that. I want to see if I can move it forward to about the 12th. Just use that as an example. Call them up. I'd like to change my due date. Or you might be able to do it from the credit card app. You may give you the choice to change due date. No, what that's going to do is that'll help spread out your money a little bit so you can make that other payment. Right. So I, well, I don't have any credit cards that are due in the first week of the month. The early, my credit cards, I've got three. The first one is due on the 14th, the second on the 19th, and the third one is on the 22nd. So I've got middle and the latter part of the month. So that gives me more than enough window to make my rent payment. Exactly. And again, these are all our suggestions, our thoughts, our opinions, not our advice. We do not give financial advice in any way, shape, manner, or form. Is there something that you need to remind the viewers to do that I always forget to remind my viewers to do? Yes. If you guys could be ever so kind, I would love for all of you to do one thing. <laughs> yeah, it, it would <laughs> it would be um, greatly appreciated. Um, yeah, because my my subscriber count, you know, I'm almost I, I, I'm 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 approaching the six hundred mark, and I'd like to yeah. Possibly, if all possible, continue. And the other important thing, Steve, is for anyone viewing, if you're enjoying this video, don't forget to smash down the like button. Because what happens is every time one smashes down the like button, 
it raises the algorithm of the video to a higher ranking so that more people get to see our video content. A lot of people can use the suggestions or maybe even a laugh or two now and then, whatever. So by smashing down the like button, you're doing a tremendous thing for everyone concerned. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Well, um, everybody, this was, um, you know, a fantastic topic. It's relevant. I mean, I, I'm pretty, well, it's always been, it's always been a relevant topic, but I think it's more relevant now than before because, Oh, they can say what they want. Oh, prices are getting really, I don't know about that. I'm still paying a pretty high price when I go groceries, go get my groceries. I'm not getting, you know, prices are not, no, they're not. Anyone who is touting that the prices are so great is delusional. They are delusional. Right. Well, until I see gas come down to around 240, 250 a gallon at, for a start, hmm, I don't even want to hear it. I'm just, I'm being nice, but you know, I really don't. Oh, me too. <laughs> You know, because, angels could do no more <laughs> right all right well everybody thanks for tuning in much appreciated um and steve is going to hook up the video that i'm referring to uh in his uh description i appreciate I'll, it i'll add it in yeah okay all right well everybody um have a great rest of whatever time of day it is and um We'll see you guys back here next time. Bye-bye.